Hi everybody, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you three easy tips to improve your string curl sticks. And then just take one second to post on Facebook and I'm going live right now. So in this video, you will learn three tips that really make your string crossings easier. And let's directly dive into it and start with the first tip. So the first tip, and this is something that I often see, is that you don't have to you, you only make an up and downwards motion and in the moment that you are between notes, you don't move your bow. So a common mistake in string crossings is that if we go, let's say, from the G string to the A string, that we hear another string in between. So for instance, if you want to play G and then A one, so the B, that we hear the D in between. A really easy way to solve this is to really make sure that if you're crossing strings, the only motion you make is up and down. And do you see that this motion is coming from the arm and the, and the elbow? Actually, the elbow is moving up and down, and the whole arm moves along, and the hand as well. Do you see that? You can think of it as a square over here. So this bow together with the arm over here, that will follow, that will create a share. How do you say this word? Um, square, <laughs> square. So this is a square. And um, you can imagine that you have to keep the same square and that you just move your elbow up and down and the square's just moving along. So really make sure a string crossing is only an up and down motion. So from now on, if you're practicing, You might need to do the string crossings a little show slower to really integrate this up and down motion. So let's go to the second tip. So next to moving only up and down, you also need to make sure that your finger is ready before you bow. And this is a mistake that a lot of beginning violinists make, that on the moment they start bowing, their finger is not completely ready on the string yet. And what happens then is something like this. And if you would make that faster, do you hear that? That is like that. Sometimes you hear that little squeaky sound, and that make and that is the reason for that is that your finger is not ready on the string yet. So an easy way to combat that is to really make sure that your finger is on the string before you bow. And a way to practice that is actually by pizzicato. Because on the moment we play pizzicato, so that's plucking the strings, right? If we play pizzicato and our finger is not ready on the string yet, we will hear this. It just doesn't work. So naturally, we tend to always pluck the string after we've placed the finger on the string. So let's try that together right now. And you notice you always have to place your finger first and then you can pluck the string. Now let's try that with the bow. Also, make sure to keep your fingers on the string if they can be kept on the string. For instance here, if I play this. Just keep your fingers on the string as long as you possibly can. So if you play 3-1, three, 3-1 one, three, one all the time, keep both of your fingers on the string. If you play 2-1, or 3-2-1, like 3-1-2-1, If that are the fingerings, make sure to keep the first finger on the string, because you play it all the time, right? So that is an easy way to actually reduce the movement in your left hand, and that makes it easier. Also, if you play, for instance, a long part, for instance here, if you go to the hall, on that moment, you can already prepare your finger on the moment you play the other string. For instance, here we play three, and then a lot of Gs. And then we can already prepare 
with the left hand and go to the next note while we are still playing the G string. <laughs> So if we make the run downward, we place all the fingers, so we only have to lift them. So we only have to lift the fingers and they are already on the correct place of the string. So three, lift the three, two, one, lift one, all the fingers back on the string. All fingers on the string again. So that makes it much easier as well. Always make sure that the fingers are well prepared. They know where they want to go and you already place them as early as possible when playing. So if you know you are going to play first finger on the E string, next note, make sure to already place that finger before the next note is actually happening. And that will make your string crossings much cleaner. And also this is difficult. So it takes a lot of time to integrate this. And you need to practice really slowly in the beginning to actually make sure that you place your finger in time. So in the beginning, you might want to play like this. And place all the fingers on the string slowly. And like that. So let's go to the third. So the first tip was, as we remember, really make sure that you only make an up and down motion. The second tip, make sure that your fingers are always on the right place before you bow. So make sure the fingers go first, then the bow. It's always the case in violin playing, right? First the left hand, then the right hand. They are not exactly at the same time. The left hand always goes a little bit before the right hand. Okay, let's go to the third tip, and that is to make very small motions. So as we know, we can play on the string on different places. We can play on the A string here. And we can also have the elbow much higher. And it still is on the A string. Do you see that? So that's the A string. And look at my right elbow. Elbow goes down, but still I'm on the A string. So we have different elbow levels for each string. And you want to choose your elbow level exactly right for the string crossing that you are going to make. For instance, if you're making a string crossing that goes from, let's say, A to E, you want to make your elbow level as low as possible, so it is closest to the E as possible. So you don't have to make a big motion at all when you're moving to the E string. Just compare that with this. It's much more stressful. So make your motions as small as possible. And to do that, you can actually look at the string from over here, and then you can see how can I place the bow so close that it's almost touching the string that I want to play next, but it's just not touching the string. And that is where you want to bow. So that were three tips to really make your string crossings easier. So let's repeat them for a moment. The first tip is to make an up and down motion. You don't make a horizontal or vertical motion in between notes when you're doing string crossings, but because then you will hear some squeaky sounds. Next to that, your fingers should always be ready before the bow and make sure to anticipate which finger you are going to play before you actually start playing. And the third tip is to really make sure to make your motions as small as possible, to make it as easy as possible for yourself. Because in the end, if you see the really good violin players, you will see that it looks so easy. And it is because it is easier than what you are doing. They try to make it as easy as possible for themselves. And that is why it looks so easy. Still, of course, to really learn that, to make it that easy for yourself and to really learn to play that that well and to make sure that you can actually, for instance, play as closely to the strings as possible. That takes a lot of time, but in the end, it will make it easier. So 
I hope these tips are helping you to improve your string crossings. I really want to thank you for being here, for those of you who have been here live. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.